Like that. I'm just going to give it a minute and see how many other people uh, called in. But thanks for joining in. Hopefully you're getting all of this and um, after watching back some of the videos which I've had a chance to do over the last week I realised my voice is a bit confusing so I'm going to try to remember to slow my speech down uh, especially for the, um, the subtitles which yeah they don't seem to handle my uh, crossbred Essex and Welsh accent. <laughs> right, okay. That's going to offend both sides, that is. Uh, okay, right. What you're looking at right now is some work that I did earlier in the week. Um, I'll make it clear right from the start. I'm not going to do the penetrate this week, but I am going to explain part of my process for it. Uh, I sort of made a bit of a, a discovery in terms of mark making in the last... 36 hours and sort of ventured down that avenue with the um, with the work and what you're going to see in a minute is are, is are the results of that work um, yeah again it's another thing that I've sort of uh, the ever productive uh, Mark Yeats or Yeats Yeats I think it is Yeats makes on YouTube He's got a demonstration where he uses um, biro, and if you press hard enough into the paper, you get left with a residual image, which is what I'm about to do. So you'll see all this process in a minute. That's the blank plate. That's what they look like before I put them into the uh, or onto the press once I've inked up the press, and then that's sort of. I'm hoping you can see from that. But there's a lot of linear quality to that, but maybe you can. I'm trying to see what you can see on the camera, but it's a long way away from me. Hopefully you can see the linear details in that. Over here are some of the, um, yeah, so these are what I'm going to come back to these in a minute. Probably not that one. Maybe later on when I explain the uh, power traits. Those, are, uh, those two I'm going to do the prints of. And here's some of the examples so you can have a rough idea and I can put some pressure on myself about things that I hope to. Um, yeah, so they sort of led from last week with doing the, um, the resist techniques. This was very similar to this one, except I'm doing that and it, it, the linear qualities are all but gone on that. But uh, there's enough there for me to, you can sort of blend over the resist technique into the um, I don't know what you call it the uh, the pressure technique of the with the, the with the biro pen it doesn't need to be a biro something that's going to give some sort of minor engraving to the paper um, that was a bit of a crossover but it's very again it's not so easy to see it's a landscape <laughs> Um, right, these are the ones that I've done recently in the last 36 hours. So again, I don't know, maybe if I do that, is that, how's that look? Can you see the lines on that painting? I hope you can, like faint blue lines. So I've tried it with different uh, colours, but to begin with I did it like uh, Yeats does, Mark Yeats on his channel, with... Um, Pines grey and black, and that's the same thing again, almost the same composition. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. Well, towards the end of it, and again, I, I'm actually thinking with all of these. Obviously, there's a more complete portrait as you're going to see in a minute, and mapping that in and using the resist technique, and I'll probably go over these in totality, just flat blank them out with the 
transparent water uh, oil pastel and then scrape that away almost all of that will get retained as the uh, image but I'll also have a different format of gel plate printing around the exterior of the profile because obviously the rest of the shape is quite important as well so these were playing with this is the sort of uh, I've started using br uh, bigger brushes and obviously getting brush marks into the, the gel plate that one I'm quite pleased with Retains as gel plate always does a lot of detail I think I posted this one earlier but you can see this will all you'll see at the end how um hopefully if I do a good job of explaining it how they it's either this one or this one that I'm gonna turn into a penetrate so this is same technique different different portrait so these were the uh, these two were the early stages and you can see where I'm using the the black and the um, Payne's grey in these areas here obviously around there and there same guy that's actually part of that's a print from that similar form to that one um, that one I'm really pleased with also that one that was the one where it, it, it sort of all clicked together into but there was a couple of forerunners to it which the one underneath is yeah once you've got the it's it's an age old rule once you've got the established drawing you can sort of pretty much throw what you like on top of it people will do the pareidolia trick all day long where they see faces in abstract shapes so once you've got the bare rudiments of of a portrait you can pretty much get away with um for i mean i was talking to somebody earlier this week and this is sort of um partly in, uh, and i was watching we were talking about andy warhol and the netflix um I think it's a six part series, it's really good if you haven't seen it, especially the later episodes. And some of the stuff that he does from the drag scene as portraits are just, I think they're some of his best work. And so I was thinking about how he was using gestural marks onto the silk screen for his so called paintings. They're prints, just like these are. There's a difference between painting and prints. <laughs> One's a flat surface hitting it, the other isn't. <laughs> um, I suppose you could debate that. Yeah, so that's another forerunner to that. This was a bit of a an experiment which I've been doing. Weirdly enough, it's almost like my subconscious anticipated this, but um, over the last, I suppose, two or three weeks, I've been doing like doodles in my sketch pad with contour portraits that's basically me putting one of the contour portraits onto the large gel plate lifting it away then you get left with the contour drawing that's not taken onto the gel plate or not taken onto the paper and then I painted over the top of it with the with the acrylic so that's quite an interesting forerunner that one obviously you can see is linked in with that one those two Okay, so I'll get them out of the way. At the end, I'll go back through and show you how they're going to sort of become penetrates. Because for once, I have remembered to bring examples upstairs. Okay. Sorry about that. Right, there we go. Let's put that over there because I'm only getting that sheen off the top of that. Okay, once again, it's, I wouldn't use too much paint for this particular technique. This is paint's great, really cheap. This is like student quality paint. Sorry, students, I don't even know who's made that. 
but I'm not a big fan of using uh, bare-faced black paint uh, even though I think Royal Duffy has a point that he didn't learn how to paint until he learned how to use black in his in his paintings and I think he's probably got a point there. Um, but I like I prefer Payne's grey I like the fact that when you fit it out it's got a lot of blue in it it's a bit like a biro sort of black as you fit it out it, it dissipates into a blue so yeah not too much and I can once again I can use you can see where I've been doing similar size prints on this plate and you can use that as a rough sort of register that comes in handy later obviously any kind of registering with repetitive images is going to come in handy it's going to be a bit of hair dry treatment I'm afraid today so be ready on the mute button okay right now you've got to be quick about this you can see from this this is quite this is just photocopy paper so it's not not the world's greatest uh, um, paper quality but then you can press right through it and that was my thinking but literally you can see how long I put that on for there we go that's done that lovely Gonna get try to give you some sort of let's put a bit of white paper on like that. Right, let's have a look. Can you see that? Not really. You see it now? Try and lift that up with a paper behind it. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but it's there and it's a good print. It's a, a good quality take on it. You might have to bear with me a moment while I am. Um... Now that won't take long to uh, to dry out. It's probably as close as damn it now. But what I'm going to do in the meantime, just to be on the safe side, because uh, I've heard... Uh, well, I've watched a few of Yeats uh, videos this week. I do most weeks anyway, but uh, one of the things that he said is quite... Uh, um, I'm going to reiterate it. He, nearly all of these takes are, de are dependent on the paint being dry, the layer before it, or it just doesn't work, it blends. Um, because obviously so much of what comes on with the gel plate is chemical process or it is once you start getting the paint thicker okay so I'm going to do another one from that and you can just keep on go back you know to, to a certain especially if you've got a light box you can keep going back oh I'm going to need to do that again I know when I put the lid back on it um, You can you can keep going back and sort of uh, re-establishing the biro drawing. You don't need to use biro. And I haven't really tried it with thicker paper yet, but I suspect thinner paper probably works better for it. But I haven't given it a good go. Um, So I bet you can't see any of that. Right, do the stamp thing here. This is, and I treated myself this week to a new gel plate. God, it makes a difference. I see why most of these demos are done on brand new gel plates now. Right, that. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Camera. 
are you getting that is that just reflecting oh, I think that's just reflecting isn't it it's there again so we've got and now I can leave that one to dry the other one will be dry enough now for me to work on it you could use that one again my personal take on these I think that's only had one take off a bit that one not like this one so I really like them I think that they lend themselves to not use it once you're done with um, using them for this uh, pressure uh, sort of engraving technique or embossing technique then um, I I think they loan themselves this one for me is definitely I'm thinking of going back over the top of this with oil pastel or wax crayon and then yeah either on the portrait or the background or a blend of it and then building something more established out of uh, going back to the, the but I do like it it's just an abstract image it works perfectly fine for me here there's bits where it's caught the eyebrow and the underneath of the eye that's, it. that's all you need or it's all I need anyway um, but they, they, they make interesting and they get really interesting when you start mixing different colours and shades up with them as well which I've done let's see if I can find an example for you I'll take a minute So that's usually doing it using colour. And that's the one that's the profile one. And that I'm almost certainly going to use as I um as with the resist technique with it. So you can see the lines there, it came out really nicely that one. There we go. Let's carry on. Right. Okay. So hopefully you're not getting too much shine off of this. Right. For the um for the purposes of getting the the image across and onto your um so you can see it a bit more clearly because what you just saw with that colour one and I could, even from where I'm standing what I can see on your screen, I know you could see it then so it's, uh, yeah but I'm not sure whether you saw the portrait sort of uh, the transfer the transposing of the line drawing on this one very clearly but hopefully when I do this bit now you'll get a better idea so it is a bit heavier on the paint this technique it's got to be said okay. now you can use it with your your paintbrush absolutely loaded with water if you want you get some quite interesting effects if you do that but I want quite an established uh, mark so dry the brush out a little bit load it up because I want it to go as long as possible so right I'm going to go for this right hand I think. nice and flat and you're going to need as you come further and further up the painting pressure on it right there we go right that's what I mean it's quite it likes to eat paint this technique but I think it pays off personally for me it definitely pays off I might um, don't want to go getting 
too carried away with that. Quite a bit of paint on it, but I'll just do that with it. Right, so yeah, and I, I thought forward enough as well to realise I'm going to need a lot of water for this. I might put the water over to this side actually, because I'm going to be using that a lot. So. Now there's other things you could do here if you built up the light, light or that you could do once you've built up the layers. So the, the, it's a very, I think that, I think you could like, especially if you do what I do and you work from like quite um, specific line drawings and you can pretty much replicate them time and time again. You can do a lot of layering with this, and that's what like I'm, I'm quite interested in, in just building up maybe 15 different coloured line drawings. Just keep on lifting another layer in, then using opposite or complementary colours, and seeing what I can get out of just building up a mesh of. It'll probably end up looking like a rubber band ball, but. It may not do, and if it doesn't, it will pay off, and it probably won't pay off first time, so I'll probably need to do it a few times. Right, I'm afraid it's time for the, the first dose of the hair dryer, so I'm going to give you a fair warning on that. Right, you might want to hit mute now then, this is going to take a little bit because the paint's quite thick. Okay. I mean, I'm not naming the paints here again, but like that was the. I think we've all heard of that. That's quite a popular colour, that, that, and Amsterdam seems to be. I don't know. Seems to be the. Uh, whenever I see their paints, it's always that colour. <laughs> it's a popular one. They call it teal, don't they, with uh, golden. <clears throat> right, so these are System 3. Well, this one's System 3. And I, can't, I think this is some sort of pale. What's it called? Cadmium orange light. That's it. Right, and I want that to sort of. I don't know. I will find it as it happens. See, this is the difference with. Galleria, I don't need to add any water to the mix, but with the System 3 paints, I do. They're quite thick, and I think it makes the paint last longer. So, I've got an idea of what colour I'm going to use. I'm going to switch that over, over on that side. And sometimes that's all you need is something as simple as that. I'm going to hint, but you have to be like, don't. The reason that I'm sort of, I'm letting the weight of the brush do its own thing. I'm not putting much pressure onto it because you will remove the the line drawing from the. Now maybe that's to your advantage. You might want to. You want to. You might want to do that as you. I doubt it because it will help convey the structure 
but bear that in mind when you when you use that's why I'm sort of pulling it I'm letting the brush do its own work even though I'm directing it it's uh, I'm yeah if you put too much weight on it you will remove start removing layers underneath it's not so bad with this a thicker body of paint onto it that will sit perfectly fine the vast majority of that but those where where the drawing is obviously you can't see it from this side because I have painted over the top of it now but or whether the drawing is inked pro it's quite fragile and so you you need to deal with that accordingly let's see how it looks on the other side right I know what I'm going to do here and I think it's going to work quite well but you never really know until you do it again hair dry time right do you want to hit me out? I'm going to use this. is obviously the paintbrush gets you get a lot of residual paint left on the paintbrush with this it can't you know it's not like painting it onto a, it's not a very absorbent surface that you're painting onto um, so I, I wouldn't let this govern you it certainly doesn't govern me but bear in mind that obviously lighter colors are going to be more easily polluted so um, I try to paint tonally. I can't always do it. Sometimes I want I want the contradiction from the last. I probably will do with what I'm about to do. So this is a popular one with me. I think I've used this in every demo. This is Galleria and it's permanent magenta. I'm going to have to get some reading glasses, I think. Definitely can't read in poor light now. I said I'd make it to 50. Oh well. Okay. Right. I'm going to go for a change of water. this one and then I'll move over on to that other one that I did the uh, did the same thing with but I'm going to try that with a different sequence of colours There is a reason that I'm picking this colour. It usually, <laughs> I'm going to say this now, I'm going to tempt fate. You see, I can put a bit more pressure on when I'm doing this. Sorry, I'm digressing a bit there, but I usually find this magenta activates well with um, the orange. It's it's dark enough to play against that turquoisey tealy colour, and. Uh, my intention at the moment, this might change, is to use ultramarine as the background. 
and it definitely plays well with that. But I haven't looked at it from the other side yet, so let's have a look. for a minute while I work on the other one. And that one definitely needs a, a, a yellow behind it, I think. Right. This one. Ah, I remember what I did now. Okay. See that one? What I've done is I've used uh, one of these, that's called a colour shaper. You get them at most art supplies, and it's a bit like the graining tools that I've used in the past. You can get all sorts of different shapes with them. And basically pulled it down the contour of the image. Uh, what I think I'm going to need to do is, uh, yeah, I know what colour I start to start with. Right, that was cobalt blue on top of that. It's the background colour, so I'm going to do a bit of paintbrush work now. Get that out of the way. System free, and that is thalo turquoise. Right, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I need to see this with a bit of detail. Like I said, I'm going blind at the moment, so sorry about the uh, reflection if you're getting one here. I'll turn the light away again in a moment. I was there, I'm just going to avoid them. I'll just put my ground a little bit underneath. So, like that. Faint line. Uh, okay. Okay, back to the hairdryer again, so I'm giving you a fair warning now.
Okay, right, we'll go for a bit of golden paint here. Put that across that arm. Not a lot of use with the roller today. Right, this is golden, I think this is primary magenta. Primary red. This what I meant by that. It's golden, so we'll all forgive them. Did you hear about what they did with the shares at Golden? I didn't see a lot of people talking about that on uh, on the gel plate group, but maybe I missed it. They split the shares with everybody got shares in the company. They got fifty percent, fifty-one percent back of their the shareholder status of their company, and then they gave it to the two hundred employees that worked there. Which is brilliant, I think personally. Right, so, can't see that much of the, um, of the portrait, so I'm trying to bear in mind what I can do with that. Right, okay, that's a bit, a bit wacky there. Oh, it might work. I don't think I'm going to see, what I did with the other one that I showed you as an example is I put cobalt blue on behind it, which gives a very, um, how do I put it, uh, yeah it just gives a very purple twist to what the image ends up, are you getting that? Bet you can't see the line drawings in it, can you? Can you see the line drawings, or does it just reflect? I'm not going to see that much from that side. Um, I think I'm going to go in with a yellow on that because I just think it'll it'll sit well. I'll use the roller, but again, I'm going to use the hair dryer now. So if you want to hit mute again. So this is the binder layer, I think. But what I'll do is, just looking over for where I'll put my blank piece of paper, because I've moved it now, because I would do, wouldn't I? Right. Right. 
again it's the heavy grade paper it's 200 GSM Canson mixed media right I'm going to try and bear in mind where the rest of the portrait will fall because I'll probably use a so if you're wondering why I'm behaving like that with the paper it's because what I will do is map the line drawing around that and it, it, even if I don't use it, it gives me that chance. Okay, it is a bit wasteful for the paper, but it's pretty simple to do. It won't take me 10, 15 minutes to map in what's most of the details are gone from the drawing. It's just the silhouette shape of the exterior of the head, basically. Right, so that. That will lead to dry. Give it a bit of a wavy on the back of it. But generally at that scale, they're all right on these plates. It's when you scale up, they become a problem. Right, I'm just going to pop that out of the way, get the other one back. Okay, let's have a look at how dry that is. Right. Now I said yellow, didn't I? That's what I said. Still a bit wet though. Okay, I'm just going to dry off. Establish the background now and then put the yellow in once that's dry. So I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. So, again, this is Galleria. That's it's another one I use a lot. It's pale violet. Bit of a cut ice cream fanatic. I don't drink so. I'll get sugar another one. Okay. Right, I'm going to paint that anyway. Right. I'll use the one that I've used in the magenta anyway. I need quite a bit of paint for this. try to get continuity with my marks. By that I mean that they flow. It's not, you can't do it all the time. Again, use the, uh, use the weight of the brush if you can. Try to swap your hands when you're painting. It's good for your brain. Trust me, I've done my research. Says so I'm going to go back to using my left hand now. should mean is that I will now roll her on the yellow and use the yellow as the binder layer I think there's enough in there I don't want to go 
getting carried away. I mean, with all of these, it's um, the next stage, if I need it to be a stage, doesn't necessarily need to happen. Some of them I'm perfectly happy that I've done over the last few days to just leave as they are. But if I need to, I can start using the resist technique with the oil pastel or the wax crayons and work back into the image and uh, start establishing, use it to establish details again. Um, but at this level, essentially with this one, I'm going to keep it nice and simple because it's a lot of it is hanging off the back of the hanging off the back of but it, it, it what's maintaining a lot of the structure if I've got this right I haven't looked at the other side is the colour and then the line drawing that I've already established and the marks with which I put the colour down right more hair dryer I'm afraid and this will take a bit So this is going to be the binder layer, but before I do that, I need to remember to have a piece of paper ready. So I'm done off fly when I do this. I can't believe it's 10 to 8. Right, okay. Again, so it's a binder layer. I mean, don't go mad, but you need a bit on it. What I was also going to, I've been meaning to say this while I've been using the hairdryer. When you're using, if you do go about using this way of, uh, make sure that it's properly dry, the paint. And you'll be able to see it. You, can, it, you get much finer detail out of the brush strokes when they're properly dry you can see how they're sort of there's different thicknesses and it it, it it becomes well the transparency just becomes more obvious I suppose I'm gonna say that. I mean something that I've the reason that I'm do, using this as a cross as a, an entire binder layer here is because of that background um, usually what I would do is a different different tone of yellow 
or a, you know it's opposite colour or something a different it within the confines of the 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 portrait outline. But I think uh, maybe I'm going to get this wrong now. But I think it will pay off to to do this because it means that I can keep a lot of the line drawing that was holding that holds the. the structural integrity of the composition. Right, that's enough of that. Right, make sure I get that right. Right, didn't used to be a fan of this. But, it definitely pays off. It looks messy and dirty to print makers, but it just holds it on that edge and that means the rest of it gets a, a good chance to even, it's almost like it stretches the paper. If I was talking about it in terms of painting, that's really what it does, it keeps. I do find that impressive that usually to do that, to get, without getting the cockling effect that you get out of paper when you, you over soak it across one side of it doesn't do that with fantastic uh, holds it stresses across it obviously that depends on the integrity of the paper as well okay I'm going to put that to, to, to the side for a second to dry off and then right it's quite simple from here on in I'm just going to uh, do the reveal on these two plates and then I want to show you what because a, a few people have asked me about it, it all seems a bit pointless Josh <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely a bit of an arbitrary thing being an artist but there is purpose to it and I haven't really shown you on any of the videos what the purpose is to it but I'm going to need a bit of space to show you it so that's what I'm prepping up here. Right, okay. Let's, uh, let's go for the reveal on this then, shall we? Uh, to do this best for you. I don't, I can't, I can't move the camera so you're just going to have to rely on my tone of voice. Mm, mm, I'm not going for it from that side. one I'm going to use the hairdryer on the back of it because I think that's because it's not I've allowed it to dry maybe too much on the, on the plate in terms of the colours it's really nice there we go it's not as bad as I thought ok how much of that can you see Yeah, that's come through from the plate before I think the colours are fantastic it's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be sorry about the shine on that see it there so these areas are right, that's not shine that is white paper where it's stuck to the plate but that might pay off later to have those white. It's happened over the eyes. And I think what's happened there is, is there's a lot of stresses and surface difference in the paint and how it's gone down there. I don't know why it's happened there, but it's really happened around the eyes. And I'm guessing that's because there's more to get caught on and more surface tension going on on the surface of the paper. Okay, next one. I'm going to 
dry this. This will take a minute to do, and I'm gonna, after that, I'm definitely, yeah, this is still a bit wet. Okay, you might wanna hit mute, this will take a little bit. It's lost some of the. Uh, I just love the the, the colour stuff that's going on in it, and uh, there you go. That's what happens when it sticks really well. Is it pulls it off the edge of the paper. <laughs> right there we go. Right, I'm going to pop that there for a minute just to flatten it out and take a second. Right, I don't know how much of that can you see. If I, oh God, not a lot. If I do that, let's turn it off. Hey. There's some really nice interesting details on the neck. I mean it's another one that I might I might consider. I mean I'm never far away from tessellating things together anyway. That would fit over the top of that like that. I'm, I wouldn't do that to be honest with you, but right. So there you go. That's that's the technique. I'm glad that one's turned out the way it has. I'll put a photo up later. It's a bit difficult now because it's gone pitch black out there. Um, and I don't like taking them unless they're in decent light. So it might be tomorrow. Um, but you can see the technique. Hopefully, I mean, it is quite detailed, but I mean, I'm going to do it again. Can you see the line drawing still in that? I can, it's quite clear. And you can really see it in the neck. But it's one that I might do another resist over the top of because I've actually lost quite a bit of information that is still there, plenty to work from, that I could use the um, the oil pastel technique and just plate stamp print it with a small plate over the top, maintain all this colour. I really like the fact that it's kept these this wave. That's all the line drawing that I established before. Okay, so there you go, That's the, there's the technique. What I'm going to do with them, with these multiple takes, and I'm thinking of doing it, 
with these ones, with the, uh, let's get all the wet media around. Shut Right, okay. That's one. I'm not going to be able to post this on Instagram, am I? They don't let you post things that are more than an hour long. That seems like a remarkably smart move. Right, so as you can see, they're all from the same composition, which you've seen before already, I'm sure if you've seen any of my, what I've been doing recently, not that one. So what I do is I work out where, the, especially when I've already got evidence of the line drawing, which I have in an awful lot of these across them, it's it's ambiguous with some of them it is with this one. I don't know whether I do it with this one. But what I will do next is work out, certainly for that one, I think, because it'll add to this feeling of the plate moving across. There's a lot of movement in there, but I think it, it's a context thing. It's not enough context, but not enough. Um, that one is just crying out for much cooler colors, uh, like a contradictory one. That one will probably get saved, so I won't do it to that. Possibly that one, and I do like that one, but I think it will sit well with these ones. That one, I'm something quite troll about that one. So, what I will do is work out where they fall on the page as a form of register, and then I will cut them up. Now, how I cut them up, obviously depends how I, uh, you know, it's, well, it's going to have an effect out because I will reassemble them into one image. By that, what I mean is this. So these are the examples. Some of these I've used gel plate printing with, some of them I haven't, but you'll get the idea. Right, this one I haven't, but it has got lino cuts in it. Now what that is, is three different studies of the same landscape which is down in Broadstairs and you can see I've numbered it all once I work out how they're all gonna how the continuity works across them um, it's a technique that I've used for portraits multiple times but they get too big and I can't really and a lot of them are framed and it's a lot of work for me to dig them out and this is a this is a good example of of um, how it works anyway whether it's a portrait or a landscape, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, and, and with this particular way of using it, cutting them into strips, it uh, it obviously elongates the landscape and, and, and plays on that, uh, the landscape. The, the, that's why I called them penetrates to begin with, because they sort of, you have multiple versions of the same portrait and yet there is continuity within the image. You can still read it as a face, but you don't really know why you're reading it as a face. But to some degree, that's not true within a landscape because it's laterals. Uh, there's, you know, and they do have horizontal uh, uh, verticals in them, in them, obviously. But you, because it's so laterally biased, a landscape that you you can you can play with the verticals a little more. Another way of doing it, so yeah, that's, I'm thinking of doing that with those ones that I was just showing you. It's like this, oh my God. it's easier to read off of that. That's actually a figure, that's the hand there. It's the head, but you're looking right down above it. Fingers here, it's another hand obviously coming out there. And these are the feet down here. And you can follow, it's from a sculpture of an incredibly talented artist that I know in uh, in the vicinity. He's about 10 miles up the road from me, George Triggs. Look him up on Instagram. He's an amazing artist. And um, thanks for letting me use it, George. It's brilliant brilliant image and he's, he calls it collision too um, and it's all about 
in, for me, involuntary forces upon the human figure. And there's a male equivalent. This is uh, this is the female figure that he's done this with. Um, this piece here, going round there, that's a gel plate, and that's a gel plate. That circle there. So there's another way that I can do it. I can also do it with contours, but there's an that's another example of it. Um, again, it's a bit more difficult to work out here, but this is all gel plate. This background piece round here. That's all gel plate, and then that's gel plate in there as well. No? But the other the other pieces are drawings and paintings in various different media, and um, then I cut them up and reconstruct them. Uh, and this is what you and yeah, it's in, well, I don't know anybody else doing it. They haven't figured it out. I'm I'm the first one to figure it out. I think we'll see. I'm pretty sure I am. Uh, and it has all sorts of uh, complex and idiosyncratic and a multitude of digressions and tangents to fly off at, which I love. <laughs> it's right up my street and really confusing for everybody around me. <laughs> um, but yeah, to give you an idea of where they're going to get, they're going to go. So that's. But it, it takes a bit of prep time, and that's why I haven't done it today. But what I want to do is something a bit like that with these these portraits as they span across. But as you can see, if I'm going to do that with them, I'm going to need to build them up to the size, the same size A3, the ones that are offered a smaller plate. I'm not going to use that one, but just to put it so that they'll get divided. Or the ones that are, and it's quite interesting, ones that you're not so happy with tend to be the ones that play up, give the most context when you reassemble it in as a larger image. And it, it a, a, a tutor of mine watched me assembling them once uh, a few years ago. And he said it's almost like you're painting with a painting, Josh. Which I suppose it is in a certain regard. But it's very um, print technique dependent, so I thought I'd put it out there for you. Um, yeah, so um, hopefully I can come back. I've got that up the wrong way, haven't I? Uh, <laughs> that's so confusing now. <laughs> um, yeah, so hopefully I can come back next week and to be honest with you it will be dedicated to they take a good uh, if i'm working at a fair lickety split i should be able to get one put together in about an hour an hour and 10 minutes but i have to have it all cut up and ready so um and then there's obviously going to be people that are tuning into it for the first time i need to give them a bit of an explanation of how i've arrived at what i'm about to do so that will take 10 so it, it might be a bit longer next week, but um, it'll definitely give you a new idea about how to reassemble your your prints in a way that you probably haven't anticipated. And then you can, you know, if I'm, I, I, I'd like any type of, if you, if you make any kind of development on it, do let me know. I'm, you know, I can't see it all at all. No one can. So I'm always interested in, in variation and experiment. I've had a few people, I should say that as well, I'm really sorry, I should have said that at the beginning. I've had like the feedback this week, cool, brilliant, thanks a lot. I'm, I'm really impressed. Sally, I'm sorry if I was a bit um, <laughs> abrupt with you on, on I, I don't think I was, I didn't mean to be. Um, yeah, if you've got any tips, publicity is something that uh, I always, I think most artists fall flat on their face on. I certainly do. Um, so anyway, yeah, without going off into digressions about personal meanderings, how a professional, how unprofessional it can make you becoming an artist. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully I can go on. And that's why I'm doing it, you know, so there, there is a point to it. It isn't just... 
I mean, a lot of my work is just working like a rabid animal non-stop for 10, 15 hours a day, and then that's it, they get put to one side, but no, not I, I, I found a way of uh, recompiling different media to, to quite an extent of it, but I can show you that next week. I don't want to go, you can see the, you can see an idea about the process. And I've probably bored you to death by now, so if you're still tuned in, thank you very much. I'm gonna pop it on YouTube, and uh, yeah, give us a follow on the social media. I'm Josh Bowart Artwork on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. But obviously you know that, you're watching this. Okay, thanks a lot, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next week. I'll be about for a couple of hours if you if you want to um if you want to have a chat with me about uh, anything that I've talked about here or shown you here, drop us a line. Thanks a lot.